So the title is Diving into the Rabbit Hole of AI, and we have Neil Marshall with us. Neil Marshall is a ex-maths teacher, taught up in Auckland for a long time, so Auckland teachers who are a little bit older will know, will know who he is, also had roles in moderation and, and curriculum design, and he's still doing the occasional bit of um, curriculum design for, for people who really need him at the moment, so in, in a bit of a contracting role. But he's now moved in South Down to, to Wanaka, and he's had a little bit of a play in the world of AI. Um, I don't think he's going to tell you that he's the expert in it, but he's going to help us um, think about some of the potentials and talk a little bit about his journey with, with AI so far. So without any further ado, I'm going to ask um, Neil to come on and share his so um, I think uh, Jared introduced me, so um, I really don't need to spend much time on that slide, and it's nice to see one or two familiar faces. Uh, I'm going to just take you through some of the th things that piqued my interest and in what I've been doing uh, uh, investigating AI, because I do think it, it's worked, got some advantages for teachers. And I'm going to start by sort of telling you my story as to the first thing I did. But before I start, I do want to acknowledge that a lot of this work um, is not original. So there was a workshop that I was given a copy off by um, NCSM, Leadership in Mathematics, which is an uh, American organization. And quite a few of the ideas you'll hear today come from that. And also Anna, who's sitting in the background making sure things don't go wrong, um, was kind enough to give me some assistance on what to use and who to use. Um, so I was prompted by a guy called Charles Fidel, who you might not have heard of. I love him because he's a disruptor and he's asking really challenging questions about mass curriculum around the world. And he wanted me to use AI to exploit key maths ideas that have changed the world. And I came across Stephen Hawking's book, which is really quite interesting. It's a good read. And I started from there and I kept asking ChatGBT questions about this book. Now, the whole of my conversation with ChatGBT is available on a PDF, which... Um, Anna can give you a link to, which if you want to read it, the next few short slides just show uh, what I was asking it. So the first thing I started was, could you please tell me what the key 10 key points were of the book? And in about two minutes, I got 10, a summary of 10 big things that were coming out of his book. And I was a bit surprised there was nothing about graph theory in there. So I asked it, could you please tell me a little bit about graph theory, which it did. And that was sort of pointed me in the direction that I ended up going down in this particular rabbit hole. And then I was interested about why or how is graph theory important in the development of artificial intelligence? Um, and that was really prompted because I was listening to a Guardian podcast about artificial intelligence at the time. And that came out with three or four really important things to do with networks and edges and nodes and centrality. And I then said, OK, so of all these ideas that are coming out of this book, which of those are actually appropriate for a high school maths lesson? Um, and it started talking about stuff which will be familiar with you for anybody who teaches level two uh, networks, all about, uh, you know, shortest path, critical path analysis, that sort of thing started coming. And it also started talking about social networks and how Facebook and organizations like that actually use this network theory in their algorithms. So, I thought I'd ask it for two examples of how social network could be used in high school mathematics. So that it was a, I thought that was a really good context for the kids. It'd be engaging and interesting, and it also links nicely to the maths. And then once we got down to social networks, I actually honed in on Facebook and said, well, how could we use it? Because it started about using talking about how Facebook uses centrality measures in its algorithms to point you at the things that it thinks you should 
look at. So it's really quite interesting. And at the end, I got two really good lesson plans which I could have used in the classroom. And it had taken me 10 minutes to get these two lesson plans. Um, and I was astonished really, because it had taken me 10 minutes of conversation with AI to go from a really important book about the history of, history of mathematics thinking to get two lesson plans linked to one of the topics within the book. And uh, I thought, crikey, I've never really been able to do that before in my teaching, to link the high school content of a maths lesson with important maths things. So that was quite a light bulb moment for me. And if you want to have a look at the whole of the conversation, then you can do so uh, by having a look at the PDF if um, Anna pops it into there. So I was then asked, wondering what on earth I might use it for. And there's a, an interesting item on RNZ, and there's the link there, and there's a PDF, which Anna can again pop into the chat and show you. And it was pretty clear that there's a lot of teachers already using this stuff in highly uh, innovative and actually useful ways. So... I would echo what Jared said. I'm not an expert on this. I've just been playing. And I do think it has value. I do think it could be really useful in terms of labour-saving advice uh, tasks. And it's worth exploring. Uh, but I think there's probably a lot of teachers in this, your area in Auckland and probably across the country who've got far more experience and uh, more interesting ideas on how to use it than the ones I'm going to show you. First, I'd like you to just pop into, um, find, use a, do a little poll to find out how many people are actually using it. There's a link there. You can either text that or pop into there and choose the right lesson. Uh, letter and that should pop up some results would you look we'll just give you a couple of minutes to have a go at that and I'll pop out of this and we should be able to see the results coming in uh, we've got any results coming in Anna yep, yep. Got B's, we've got C's. I haven't done a tally chart of this. We've got D's. No one's given an A yet. Uh, I think I saw one E. So looking at this, a lot of people are sort of hovering around the middle. They've dabbled and never really uh, not done a lot, which is probably where we all are. So that's quite a good idea. Uh, yeah. uh, but our names are attached to these responses too, Neil. So there might be some... <laughs> Right. <laughs> let's move on okay we'll leave somebody to do a, a tally chart shall we um when i was using there's quite a lot of different chat bots that you can use these are some of the ones that are i've used chat gpt was the one that i started there's an advantage with that in that you can load up a pdf um, to analyze it which is actually quite important google gemini has just come out and as far as i can see you can only upload a photo uh, not a pdf um, and i i actually quite like the fact that you can upload a pdf so i prefer chat chat gpt Pro, I've never used. Windows Copilot, I've never used. Bing Search is in Microsoft Edge, which I've dabbled with. And Khan Academy has got its own um, AI chat thing, so which is targeted at teachers. So you might like to explore any of those. Uh, they're all pretty similar, to be honest, and they're all free, those anyway. Here's some if you want to do some academic research. And I played with this. Um, 
You might be interested to know that I got ChatGBT to write a master's assignment for a topic that Russell Bishop gave me, and he gave me um, an A, and I did nothing. <laughs> so uh, I thought that was quite interesting. So those are just a little bit more advanced things for academic research. So I thought, where might you use this in the classroom? Well, there's quite a lot of what I would call administrative tasks, which I used to hate doing, that used to take up a lot of time. Writing emails to students, newsletters, any of these things that are actually on this, and I'm sure there are a whole lot more. Um, you can use artificial intelligence to do really quickly. Um, I thought you might like to have a little bit of a play. So there's some ideas coming up that you might like. To, we'll just give you 10 minutes and perhaps Anna could let me know when the 10 minutes up to just have a go at some of these. OK. Spreadsheet always causes me a problem. And Anna used to be my um, um, go to for complicated um, cell management. But I just typed that sentence in black, how do you do this into chat GBT? And out came the formula and the spreadsheet that I needed. And I was astonished. I thought, wow, that's fantastic. So in terms of managing your data, and if you're doing any data analysis for your monitoring what's going on in your classrooms, it's actually quite helpful if you're not very expert with Excel. I thought that was quite cool. Um, Writing email homes is quite good. I try going into chat GBT or any of them and try writing and asking it. Just say, please, can I have an email to a parent for a student bubble and try one of those and see what it comes up with. When I tried it, actually, I'd have been quite happy to fire it off. It just needed editing with the names in it. Um, and it was taking about a minute for a task that I would be taking probably 15 or 20 to do if I was doing it from scratch. So emails home, have a play now, if you like, and see what's happening. Discipline referrals are good. This one was good. I got a really good one for about Carl. Carl got really angry in my classroom, threw his books on the floor, swore and walked out of the room. And I just asked for a disciplinary referral to the dean. And in about one minute, it gave me a nice sheet of paper, which I could just email off to the dean. I found really helpful. So I thought that was um, really going to um, save me time as a teacher, if I was still teaching. Then I tried this one as well. This was just with a bit of a smile. I asked it to write a letter to the principal explaining why I should be assistant head of maths and it came out with quite a good one as well. So there's some ideas. Just, just go into chat GBT and try any of those routine letters that you write to parents or your teachers or anything and see how good it is. It is very dependent on what you put in. And sometimes if you don't get it right, try just tweaking the question a little bit so that you get what you want. And most of the chat GPTs, there's a little export button which allows you to export it either as a some text into a Word document or into a PDF so you can then use it. Right, I'm going to stop talking while people play. Maybe anybody got any questions or any observations, if you want to speak? And then we'll get on to looking at mathematics. Can I, uh, uh, Marcia, you need to ask chat GPT that. Can it do a tally chart? I don't know. <laughs> Very clever. I, I had a quick go, but I was struggling to get the text out of the chat easily. It didn't really. Um, I suppose if I had it exported the chat and put it into ChatGPT, it would have done a great job. Yeah. 
I think if you just write a sequence of letters, it'll just say, please produce a tally chart and off it'll come. I know Zoom does have an AI assistant too. So uh, if we had that turned on, we probably could have asked it quite quickly to do that. Right. Here's the tally charts. Oh, Jared's done that one. Yeah, I've got summarised comments from subject teachers for reports. Yes, that's a... I've got something similar to that as an idea, actually. Can I just add, can I just add though, Neil, though, like, we do have to be a bit careful here. You can't just submit, you know, uh, content of other people's into these open AI tools, like students' actual answers or writings or people's actual contributions. The ethical side of that is something that needs to be discussed. And I, I think it's like got to be balanced very carefully the idea of taking actual students report comments and putting them into a open <laughs> model like that is a bit that 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 makes me feel a little bit anxious <laughs> makes it but i've been deliberately careful to um make sure they're anonymous i suppose if you take kyle out yeah a student make them sure they're anonymous and that would be all right but i hadn't thought of that I think, I think some of the systems, like the paid for systems, whatever you put in doesn't go into their library. Um, so I know I've got a principal friend and he uses the pro version of ChatGPT so that he can put in sensitive information and it won't, it sh shouldn't go anywhere. Yeah, no, we have that too. It's just being aware of that. I think that's sometimes not something that people are thinking through um, when they're, like, for example, before with those poll results, Someone said, oh, let's put in the chat BT. And if you weren't careful, you could have posted everyone's names into chat GPT, right? With those with those scores. And then you're like, then you've just put everyone's names. Like, you know, it's things like that. <laughs> really good point. I hadn't considered it. Thank you very much indeed. Right, let's move on a little bit. Have we had our 10 minutes? Well, I think we probably have just about. Less than 10 minutes, but it's it's up to you. <laughs> Right. Um, some of the more interesting things that it is good at are actually to do with in the classroom. And I've had a look at quite a, a few of these and they, especially the first three or four, they, they, it really does give quite good results, which I think are, are worth using. Um, so in terms of writing a lesson plan, it's actually good. I hated writing lesson plans, and I'd be quite happy to put those in my folder so that I got them for my uh, teacher registration. I found it really good at writing practice problems, quite happily. It's really good at writing rubrics and marking schedules. It's good at writing assessments and stuff like that. And it's also really good on ideas for, for how to teach. So... Um, I've listed a few things that you might like to have a try at, and we'll spend a little bit more time on these than we have done on the others. Okay, so this was quite interesting. How many people, how do you make this a little bit more interesting in order to teach these? Now, this was what the bits in red are the ideas that um, chat GBT came up with as to what you might do to try and improve students with that. Okay, that's a pretty boring stuff and probably nothing in there that we wouldn't have thought about in the first place. But when you ask it a little bit more about what sort of context is appropriate for those power exponential laws, it did become a little bit, I thought, a lot more interesting in terms of ideas. So areas and volumes as exponents, I hadn't really linked together. Growth and decay, I was quite familiar with. Bacteria is obviously quite a good um, context. 
and some of those are a little bit maybe beyond a year 11 student which is i think where this comes in in the refresh or will come in in the refreshed curriculum oh hang on can we go back sorry but i really find it quite helpful in thinking about those and you know how you're always rushing to find ideas so i find that quite helpful Somebody mentioned students' reports and synthesizing comments. I thought it was quite good at doing that. This was some things that um, I just wrote down as to stuff that was coming. I might might have come back from teach uh, kids and using the chat GBT to just synthesize those into the main points. And that's similar to... Um, report comments somebody put into the chat using it like that it's actually very good at synthesizing and extracting the main points from ideas and it's also i think probably quite a good thing to do um if you're trying to evaluate responses from uh, lessons reflections on how it went from the students and also from other teachers Now, I think this is really quite interesting. Now, this is an NCA style exam question. It's on algebra. And I just uploaded the PDF and said, can I have a re rubric, please, to mark this? Now, it didn't come out with achieve merit and excellence. But it's really quite good. Now I did. I suggested you might have a an NCA paper handy, so it's actually worth trying to upload um, either the PDF into ChatGPT and ask for some solutions or a rubric and see what it comes out with. Let you have a go. Choose whatever you want. Anybody had any success and want to put some comments in the chat as to what they've got out from trying this? So is that, Marcia, is that your idea or is that what AI No, is? <laughs> no, I literally took a screenshot of the slide right here using my snipping tool and I thought I can't even read that properly so I didn't know if chat GPT could but I pasted it and said give me a marking rubric <laughs> and it came up with a whole like I'm looking at a screen full of criteria what get, would get excellent what would get good what would get satisfactory and what would get needs improvements in in accuracy of expression and in mathematical explanation so, for part one and for part two <laughs> like it's given me it's given me a whole page I don't know how good it is, actually, it? but that is extraordinary. Yeah. Anybody else had a similar experience? Oh, so, Susan, what uh, were the suggestions? You'll have to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, it said, yep, it can explain. Um... It can answer the questions. It can break down the questions for you. It can generate similar questions for you. It can explain the schedule. And it can provide further places where you can get more help on that question. Um, what was the other one? And another one. <laughs> I just have to go out of the out of here and I into it. So does that so does that mean you could just say can I have another question another question similar to like this and out it will pop? Yeah, so did you get when, one? Um when I use this with with my kids and they are using this as a chat GBT as a helper, um, they'll take that question and they'll say, generate five questions like this. 
And right. you can also get it to explain why it's a merit. You can put a question in and say, can you make, can you turn this question into an excellence question and it'll make it harder for them? Can you simplify this question and make it into an achieve question? And it does. And it does. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, cool. Anybody else? I just uh, didn't do anything too fancy. I put it on a level two algebra paper and asked them to group the questions into like content things. And it's done that. It's pulled out the exponential and the log equations are in one section and the quadratic another, manipulation another, discriminants and formulas another, rational algebra expressions is the last one. So if, I guess if I was trying to do focused revision on a particular thing, I'd know exactly where to hit. Hmm. Anybody else got anything to say? Okay. Uh, the next idea that I had, we we probably um, solving NCA problems. It's actually quite good at, um, which I think Jared, you've probably just have you been doing already? I don't know. It is in a way. Um, it's not very good, Anna, as far as I could see, on um, on some of our statistics. It doesn't know about bootstrapping. <laughs> so it is very traditional. Um, but you might like to just try and play with that. I've just to go and get my power cable because my power's running out. While you're doing that, I'll be back in a minute. Um, I don't know, Anna, have you got anything to say about the probability stuff? I I found it solved level two probability papers of the current externals really well, but it was really struggling with the level three stuff. Do you got any comments there, Anna? Comments about why there's limitations to yeah. language models and generative AI. <laughs> yeah. Or or the application to getting it to solve problems. <laughs> no, I, it's just frustrating that it, it does it's because of the way it's constructed, it's to, it it's it's very much focused on traditional Maths well, I, I think you have to appreciate that the data that it's been trained on is the data that's available on the web. And yep. so much of that data is going to be traditional mathematics and traditional probability, right? So um, yep. it's not surprising that it, it, it has not learned about patterns and relationships between words, sequences, and other areas. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I do find it's good at doing quizzes and producing... Uh, practice worksheets it's really quite straightforward um, there's one here which I typed in I was really quite happy <coughs> with it's perhaps a bit below year 11 well it is isn't it it's, it's eight or nine but just asking for 10 questions and which either the teachers can do or the kids can do <coughs> yeah. is quite good I was using this with my uh, somebody I was doing some work with, and they found it really helpful to be able to ask for the questions, then ask for the answers and self-mark. So you can try that almost for any little topic. Maybe you'd like to have a play at that as well. We'll give you a few minutes. Anybody got anything to say? Or are you all happy? I'm now looking at a year 13 excellence level probability question that would require them to draw a tree and understand conditional probability. It's got a model answer for me with the correct notation. I'm impressed. Right. That's very traditional probability, isn't it? Yeah, but that's the best kind. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cool, but it is good on that sort of thing. Yeah, cool, bananas. 
Yes, very traditional. So the context that it's that it went straight to, like they didn't have any thinking time. Um, we're producing widgets. There's a quality check or the probability that it passes or fails the first and the second quality check. So classic textbook stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I found it was quite good on planning units. This is another thing that I hate doing. I always thought my unit plans and lesson plans were best done retrospectively. Um, but <laughs> um, I did find this was quite quick. And I thought this would be, I, I'd use this all the time just to satisfy the management that I got lesson plans and unit plans. So it was really, did this sort of thing really well, provided <laughs> I was um, staying with pretty traditional mathematics. So I think it's a good shortcut. And, so, and uh, actually individual lesson plans were pretty good as well. That's another thing that I hate writing. And, and these produce these really quite quickly, so. Did you sure. find, Neil, that it does the whole job of planning the lessons or does it leave you some work to do still? Well, in terms... Well, I, I, I didn't... I, I, um, I was never one for a really detailed lesson plan. I just needed a set of notes to know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So Actually, I, I was really happy with what it was doing. Um, so it was, you know, there's a good introductory question. There's a hook. There's the body of the knowledge, <clears throat> and then I could ask it for some questions, and there's a good exit strategy for the lesson, and there was some good follow-up for homework. So I used to have done all the work for me. It was more than enough for me to go in and teach the lesson and to satisfy the powers that be. I think if you're a less experienced teacher, maybe you'd need a little bit more help. Yeah. But, yeah, that's the sort of, I mean... Yeah, I thought they were good. They're fine. Yeah, I've looked at lesson plans before and um, and they have given me a good structure to start with and then you put your own spin on things because you are your own teacher, I guess. So um, I don't know if other people know or follow him. Dan, Dan Meyer talks about this idea a little bit in, in his web posts and he's 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 quite critical of AI, so it's it's nice to read a little bit about that side too. Um, and he's he's saying that the lesson plans that that teachers are getting from this still require a lot lot for the teacher to do. They have to find the video that's gonna work to the um to what the chat GPT is whatever has asked them to do. Um, that you have to make the worksheet and and then you have to do all the teaching, of course, as well. So, um, I just interested in your perspective on that one. Has anyone else does uh, used lesson plans straight out of ChatGPT, or have you found that you have to adjust them quite a bit? I used it um, for when I had to start teaching movie making and had no concept of what I had to do. So I used it as a basis, but didn't use the actual lesson plan but use it to start my ideas going and then move from there. Cool. Thanks, Jody. Yeah. Good. Um, I, there's a poll here, which we won't bother trying anymore. We haven't got much time, but maybe I hope you've got a few ideas. Um, that you might go and try. And if and if you all go and try one thing and find it useful, then it's been a worthwhile session. I'd just like to finish off with Charles Fidel because we've been sort of hovering around just trying things, but his organization um, have done a lot of really interesting thinking on what AI means for education. And <clears throat> if you're interested in his work, there's his website, Curriculum Redesign. There's a free chapter on AI, which is available and downloaded 
and I uh, Anna can pop it in the chat, the link to the PDF, which is well worth reading. I think it's exceptionally well received internationally, his book. Uh, and I think it's done with a lot of thought uh, and understanding of both the, the good and the bad might come out of it. And I think the book itself is worth reading um, if you want to get a hold of it. He's a really interesting chap. As I said, I like him because he's a disruptor. And I'm, I think on reflection, I've spent my whole life disrupting. So I've got an affinity with what he wants to do. Hmm. That's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. So we've got three minutes left. That's pretty good. Cool. So um, you'll see that Anna's put the um, the poll V or whatever it was back in the chat. So that one is working. You can put in a little comment about what you think you might try in there. And um, Neil will get a summary back on that. We might see if we can get that um, up on our sites uh, early next week as well. Um, so thank you, thank you, Neil. Um, anybody else who who wants to ask any questions at the moment, please please go, do go and do that. But I'll I'll, I'll say my little piece. Um, it's really I think important for us as a community to be talking about this. And um, you hear a little bit of talk here and there. You hear about it from overseas. Maybe some people are playing with it. Um, but it's nice that it's math specific that we're talking about it, and we're starting to float some of those cool ideas that it can do. But also becoming aware of some of the the problems. Um, as a lot of teachers here will know that there, we have problems with kids submitting this this kind of work to us um, and us learning more and more about it is, is really important. So um, it is a bit of disruptor to us in education, so um, we've, we've got to keep on top of it. So thank you, Neil, for putting this in front of us, for having the idea and for doing all the, the mahi in the background to, to play around with this thing and, and give us some prompts and give us some resources that we could use. Um, really appreciated it. Um, um, oh, go, go, Neil. There's a really interesting comment in the chat, which I think we should. Sorry, Nico. I've got a son named Nico and a dog that barks. <laughs> um, there's a, a question about what a student's doing with it. And so Susan was already um, sort of made her mention that, what she's doing. I think that's probably a topic for another session. Yeah, well, you keep this current. 